What was once the home of 3.2 million paving bricks, now covered in asphalt except for a 36-inch strip at the start-finish line, is known as the Brickyard, or more commonly known as the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The yard of bricks is perhaps the most hallowed ground in motorsports, along with the very recognizable 65,000 square foot pagoda. My first trip to the Brickyard was a few years ago for the Indy 500, and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my career. So when my friends at Pennzoil invited me to attend the Brickyard Vintage Racing Invitational, hosted by the SVRA, I jumped at the chance to return to Indianapolis. The Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, or SVRA, is the largest and one of the oldest vintage racing organizations in the U.S. They host events annually at racetracks throughout the country, including the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I began my self-tour in the famous Gasoline Alley garages. Now, outside of seeing the cars on the racetrack, this is the only opportunity to get up close and personal with the vehicles. Now, having absolutely no personal knowledge of vintage racing, this was an opportunity to learn firsthand how racing came to be so popular over the years, watch a few races, and understand more about Pennzoil's racing heritage. Now, here are a few of the incredible vintage race cars that I was so fortunate to have been able to see. Now it's one thing to see these machines race around the speedway like this 1966 vintage Mustang race car or on the infield track, but it's completely another thing to be able to walk right up to them and look at every square inch of them firsthand. This classic was built by Frank McDonald and Walt Hain in 2005 and features a 289 cubic inch V8 engine. Walking around the rest of the garages, it was hard for me to not film everything in sight. So here's a bit more of what I saw. Throughout the day, the infield track was buzzing with vintage race cars. The sounds could be heard throughout the entire venue, and the incredible aromas of rubber and fuel made it heaven for any race car fan. I couldn't get enough. It was hard to walk away to be able to see everything else that they had to offer. Gasoline Alley is a massive garage complex located on the infield just south of the Pagoda. This is the north bank of garages that is where the original long building existed when the Speedway was first built. In 1929, a second area known as the south bank of garages was constructed. It features 96 garage units. The north and all south bank buildings were completely replaced in 1985 with what you see now. The Indy Legends Pro-Am Charity Race pairs 33 veteran Indy 500 drivers with amateur racing partners driving Corvettes, Camaros, and Mustangs in a 45-minute race. It was a mob scene, so I headed down for a closer look. It was amazing to see the Legends in person before the race and talk with a few drivers, but as I got closer to race time, I wanted a better vantage point of the start of the race, so I followed these two guys down a pit area. I figured they might have a good idea where to go. After watching all those vintage vehicles race, I wanted to learn more about the history of Indy. So I headed over to the IMS Hall of Fame Museum to see what it had to offer. As you're about to see, it's a lot. 
Upon entering the building, there are two large gift shops, one to the left and one to the right, featuring enough merch to make any race fan happy. The museum opened in 1956 but moved to this current building in 1976. It's home to Indy 500 winners, all displayed in chronological order, so it's an amazing way to see the progression of the vehicles over the course of the history of Indy. It's also home to historical passenger vehicles, rare cars from NASCAR, Formula One, Sprint, and a whole lot more, including motorcycles and drag racing. A huge area within the museum is dedicated to racing legend A.J. Foyt, and for good reason. He's one of three drivers and the first to have won the Indy 500 four times. He's got 67 career champion car race victories and has won the IndyCar Series seven times, a record that still stands. The museum houses all of his winning cars since 1961, including one where he had a serious crash in 1990, where he lost the brakes and crashed at 180 miles an hour. The museum also houses AJ's very first car and a replica 1958 garage from the original Gasoline Alley before it was torn down and replaced in 1985 with what you see today. It's absolutely incredible to see in person. The Marmon Motor Car winner from 1911 was a highlight to see as well as the collection of vintage racing helmets and even Al Unser's driving suit and helmet. Now speaking of vintage cars like that 1911 Indy 500 winner, head upstairs to the second floor of the museum for an extreme blast from the past. So I'm here in India at a vintage racing event, and yes, admittedly, Pennzoil paid my way, but it got me wondering, there must be some interesting racing history behind Pennzoil. So I started digging, and here's what I found. In the 30s, Pennzoil sponsored Russell Snowberger's successful race car, and the five years which followed, he placed in the top 10 of every race that he entered. As a result, 27 other drivers voluntarily started using Pennzoil. It subsequently became the lubrication of choice for drivers in all forms of racing. In the 50s, Pennzoil made a strong effort to market their brand to drag racing drivers throughout America, including creating an official sponsorship with the fastest rising star on the NHRA circuit, Don Big Daddy Garlitz. And in the 60s, with their push for dragsters, Pennzoil was the first major oil company to develop a racing oil exclusively for cars running on exotic fuels. In the 70s, they developed special motor oil blends for two- and four-stroke engines, and Pennzoil became the go-to motor oil for more off-road racers, trucks, motorcycles, single-seaters, and bugs than any other motor oil. In 1983, Pennzoil joined forces with Roger Penske and legendary IndyCar driver Rick Mears, who captured victory at the Indy 500 one year later. Over the five years which followed, Pennzoil cars go on to win the Indy 500 four out of five times. In 1996, Pennzoil became the official motor oil for both the Brickyard 400 and the Indy 500. Throughout the 2000s, Pennzoil cars continued to achieve victories with multiple drivers, tracks, classes, and circuits. Here are a few other things that I learned. Did you know that Pennzoil is the global oil supplier for FCA? That all BMW vehicles and SRT engines sold come with Pennzoil's Ultra Platinum Full Synthetic 0W40 motor oil with Pure Plus running through their veins from the factory, as well as all Chevy, Indy, and Team Penske cars? That's the exact same bottle of motor oil that you buy off the shelf at your local auto parts store. If it's good enough for an Indy car and OEM vehicles, it's good enough for your car. I uncovered so much more information about Pennzoil's racing heritage that I couldn't include it all. There's just so much spanning over 100 years of its history. But now I know more than ever why Pennzoil is so highly regarded in motorsports. Their formulas continue to win races no matter what you're driving. I've always had an appreciation of motorsports, especially racing, because it puts all that hard engineering work to the test whether it's from the OEM, the aftermarket, or our own ideas and custom fabrications. But to finally be able to experience vintage racing like this at SVRA's Brickyard Vintage Racing Invitational event at IMS was completely overwhelming and gave me a much further appreciation of where the sport came from and the enthusiasm that it still holds in the hearts of so many of all ages. A huge thanks to Pennzoil for this opportunity to attend the event and share it with you. Now let's get out there and race.